Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you a really useful thing you can do in Unity to store, manage, and maintain data for different types of things. I'm going to show you abilities and items, how we can build up an ability with different effects, and how we can add an ability to an item with this system. We're going to use the serialized reference attribute and a really cool plugin that allows you to select subclasses of abstract classes or interfaces directly from the inspector and then get them serialized out. So let's get started. For this example, we're going to use the classes and abilities and items from my multiplayer mastery course. And here I've got the cleric class selected. You can see it's got three abilities, a teleport, a direct damage, and a heal. And I can log in that character, teleport around. I can direct damage myself just a little bit. And then the heal one we're going to take a look at later because it does something a little bit more interesting and kind of shows how this system all works and what the interesting part is. So let's take a look at an ability. Let's we'll start with the teleport ability. First, notice that we just have an ability definition script here, and then it's got a list of effects and a cooldown. There are no other fields or properties. We could have an icon or some other stuff, but we really just need a list of effects and an amount of time for us to wait between using this ability again. Right now it does a teleport of about five meters away is the maximum, but we could add in some other effects by hitting the plus button, maybe make it spawn a particle, and we could pick one of the particles that we want it to spawn. I don't have a particle selected apparently, but you get the idea. We can add in different effects and modify the data there to build up different abilities. The direct damage ability is simply a modify pool effect that modifies by negative one. If I change it to modify by negative 10 and start doing damage here, Uh, well, I'll have to change it on my server because I'm using a multiplayer example. But in your case, obviously, if you're not doing multiplayer, you can just change the data and everything works instantly. And you, here I can change the data. I just got to do it on the right spot. But we can also add and extend to this pretty easily. We can put in a delay to put in a time, an extra delay between different effects. But let's take a look at what this code looks like. And actually, first, let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's take a look at this heal. So it's labeled heal, but it actually spawns a particle at the beginning, right where we are at our caster's position. It modifies our health by five, and then it teleports us after two seconds, and then spawns another heal particle. Let's try that out. So first I'm gonna damage myself, get my health down, and then we'll do that teleport. One, two, it does the teleport and pops over and we can see the character did the second effect right there afterwards too, and did the heal. So I take my damage, I do this, and at the end when it pops over, bam, he's healed up. All right, so let's take a look at the code and see how this all works, and then I'll talk about how you can use this for other things, not just abilities. So here's our ability definition script. You can see it's a simple scriptable object, got the standard create asset menu, so we can create these different abilities. And then it has a list of effects and a cooldown field. There are two attributes here that are important. First is the serialized reference. This is what's gonna make our ability effects be serializable and save off into the editor or into the serialized data and show in the editor. The other part is this subclass selector. And we're gonna take a look at this in a moment. It's not part of Unity. It's actually part of an external package that you'll wanna to grab to be able to view this data. If you're using Odin Inspector, you don't need this. It does the same exact thing and I think even a slightly prettier version of it but this is a free open source one that you can use. Interesting learning resource as well. And it makes this all just possible without having to have Odin. So let's take a look at the ability effect. Ability effect is a simple abstract class with a delay field on it. So we can have just an amount of time again before the effect is applied. It has an abstract apply method that takes the owner of the thing and then an ability target. Ability target is really just a location and a target character and then some serialized stuff for the network, you don't need that part. All you really need is the ability effect and an apply that has the thing that's casting it and whatever the target is. In my case, I like to have targets that are locations or characters, so I use an ability target that allows for both of those. Then we have different effects that we inherit from with. So I've got a buff stat effect that will modify a stat by an amount, and this one actually doesn't do anything yet. This is a coming soon effect, but let's go take a look at an effect that actually works. Effect log is pretty simple. It just logs out whatever the message is. The effect for teleport, again, pretty simple. It tells the owner to do a teleport on server, which does some networky stuff. You 
you could also, if you're doing single player, just instantly set the position right here. Something like a modify pool just figures out which pool it is. Let's see right here. Finds the pool or tells the pool system to modify the pool by that amount. And then you get something like a spawn particle, which is slightly more complex, and then spawns particles e either caster or target location. And you can imagine you can keep adding and adding and adding effects in a big final game. You may expect to see 20 to 30 different effect types that are doing different things. And then you and your designers can build stuff up from there and make some really cool, interesting abilities without having to code every single ability. And if you want to code your ability, and script them out individually. I think that's fine if you're doing five or six of them. But once you get up to dozens of things and you start to build stuff out more, it usually is, I think, useful to build up something like this. Now, I did mention that we could also use this for items. So let's take a look at how this works for items and then I'll show you the component that makes this all visible in the inspector. So if we want to do an item and a good item example would be something like we want to add effects that the item has and the effects do different things like add an ability on equip. Here I've got one that does add ability on equip and I haven't added any other effect types. I can select an ability to add and then our, when our player equips that item, our code can just look for any effects that are add ability on equip. And if there are any, it can apply those abilities. This could do things like uh, abilities on attack or on successful hit or on any other thing. We can add up all the different types of effects with their different triggers and then have them be on here without having to add in fields for all of those different things. I don't have to add a list of fields for equip effects and then a list of fields for other things. I can have fields that do different stuff and are just assigned through the inspector like this. So let's take a look at the item definition. Item has a sprite, a list of stats, a list of equipment slots. We're not going to get into those. They're covered in the coursework stuff, not part of this video. And then we have, again, a serialized reference with the subclass selector and a list of effects. But here I went with an interface just to show you that this works for interfaces and abstract classes. If you're going to have common shared things like that delay that I was going to have that I had there, then an abstract class I think makes more sense. If you're not going to have anything shared, then you could go with an interface as well. Although I generally just typically default to an abstract class out of habit on these. Um, I think it's largely because I almost always have some sort of shared field there. So that's kind of the core of it. And that's the thing that I wanted to show basically how the serialized reference is useful and how you can start to serialize off this data. Just make sure that you have that serializable attribute over all of the things that are implementing this. But now let's take a quick look at the thing that makes this actually work so that we can see it in the inspector. This is, I mean, honestly, I feel like this is a feature that should just be part of the Unity editor. If you agree with me, then uh, hit the thumbs up button or drop a comment and let me know or let, let Unity know that you think it should be there. But this is the, it's a uh, Mackie soft and it's the Unity serialized reference extensions. I'll drop a link for it and special thanks to, uh, MackieSoft for uh, making this and ma making it available for us all. It's pretty freaking cool. You add this pa package in, you, it's not really a package, you can just download it, grab the folder, pull it into your project, add in that subclass selector, and then suddenly you'll have this drop down where you can select those subclasses. It's as easy as that, it just kind of worked. Um, I definitely would recommend either use this or again, if you're um, if you're already using Odin Inspector, then that'll do it too. You can, you can see the same data, you don't have to go grab this, um, but if you don't have Odin, then this is a great alternative option. All right, if this was useful, drop a thumbs up, subscribe and all that stuff. If you want to see more of this stuff in depth, make sure to check out the Multiplayer Mastery course. And if you've got questions about this or things that you think maybe should have mentioned more about in here or something else you want to learn about, uh, drop a comment down below and I'll try to get to those as well. All right, thanks again, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.